beat the market or join the market. They should really be the only two routes for investors because no one's out there looking to lose money. But that's exactly what many investors do. In other words, they decide to try and beat the market, but their performance lags versus the S&P 500 or the QQQ or you know, pick an index. So what's going on? Why are seemingly intelligent people functioning in society, earning money, saving enough of that money to invest in the markets? Why are they losing money? Is it just that markets are fixed? Do you need the best software to find the best investments? Or maybe it's just that those people lucky enough to be in the right stock at the right time, maybe they're the ones that make it big. So is the stock market a gamble? Are only the lucky ones able to win? Warren Buffett, one of the most successful and famous investors on the planet, considered that very question. His thoughts are summed up in a short article, which I'll link in the description. It's called The Super Investors of Graham and Doddsville. It's a short article, only about 12, 13 pages, but it's really interesting. So if you've got time, take a look. And no matter what type of investor you are, passive or active, um, I think it's going to be worth looking at. So in this video, I'll break down the message as simply as I can to give you some, uh, some bite-sized chunks as to what he's talking about. So Warren starts by pondering the question as to whether or not value investing is out of date. Value investing is simply looking for companies that are trading at significant discounts to their intrinsic value. Now this article is close to 40 years old. So if the question was worth asking back then in the 80s, then it's even more of a relevant question now because of the amount of data that we've all got access to. I mean, with this information and instant access, the market should be efficient, right? Um, you know, imagine stocks are always priced accurately based on fundamentals and known variables. And then by definition, this would mean that we don't have undervalued uh, stocks and therefore there's no opportunity to find companies trading below their intrinsic value. Now, taking that train of thought to its logical conclusion, anyone that's beaten the market consistently would simply be lucky because the gains that they're making are coming from unknown unknowns. In other words, things that are not already factored into the price of the stock, nor could they be researched because there's no information available. Now, remember, the assumption that people have when making this claim is that the vast amount of information available to everyone make the market efficient and therefore correctly value stocks almost all of the time. Now I'd call BS on that challenge because humans by their very nature are not typically going out of their way to research anything, be that the right food they should be eating, you know, based on what's on the food label. The small print in contracts is one that I never tend to read and company financial statements and market insights. Again, information's there, but how many people actually take a detailed look? But Warren's got more class than I do and his response is very measured, methodical and if you read the article you'll find it quite persuasive. Now he asks people to imagine a situation where everyone in America flips a coin and bets a dollar on the result. Now at the time he referred to a total population of 225 million people which is about 100 million less than it is today. But for the sake of keeping true to what he said and how he said it, let's just stick with his maths. So they flip a coin uh, once a day and the winners progress to the following day. The losers hand over their dollar or any winnings that they'd made so far. Uh, and then of course they drop out the contest. Now after 10 days, based on this relatively easy to understand 50% odds of winning, there'd be about 220,000 people left still in the contest. And they'd have turned their $1 into just over $1,000. Now you'd like to think that most of them would just admit they'd been lucky but we all know that people will probably concoct up some fanciful superstition that if they wear the right socks and eat the right breakfast while listening to the right songs, then when it comes to the coin flip, they'll call it correctly. And if it were today, they'd then obviously make a YouTube video talking about their preparations and create a coin flipping course so that you too can enjoy their success and so on. Now, 10 more days tick by and we're down to 215 people all of whom have called uh, on their respective coin flips correctly 20 times. In doing so, they turned $1 into a million, and across the nation, that $225 million that they started with has been lost, but gained by this small group of coin flipping experts. Now, obviously, they're not experts. If you repeat this exercise with 225 million of anything that can flip a coin, you'd have the exact same result. 
215 coin flippers with over 100 million in flipping profits. So Warren considers why this could be and he eventually lands on clearly statistic, statistical look. And it's here that he starts to show the differences between being lucky and being a super investor. Now, based on the results he presents, it's clear that something is differentiating these people, these super investors, from everyone else. And it's not simply by chance that they beat the market. They don't even buy the same stocks. But regardless, year after year, they pulled in results that far outperformed you know, index fund investing. So how is that possible? How are people consistently beating the average? Now Warren breaks this down into a, a couple of points. He starts with what he calls the master, you know, Ben Graham as a sort of intellectual patriarch who lays down the theory that students have subsequently followed. And that theory is that investors should set your discrepancies between the value of a business and the price that the business trades at, you know, the share price. And if they find discrepancies in their favor, then they buy the company. It almost sounds too simple, obvious even, but that's not how retail investors tend to operate. Now I'll probably make some videos at some point about the mistakes that I personally made in my early investing days. And spoiler alert, the biggest amongst them was following tips from people that I thought knew more than me, be that tipsters in magazines or people that I personally knew. But all that happened as I followed these random buy and sell tips was that I destroyed my portfolio. Anyway, if we simplify it, investors should be looking for money machines that just print dollar bills. And based on how frequently the bills get printed and how much you need to discount this to account for a risk, you know, future risk, then that business will have a value. So let's say it prints $100 every year. What would that be worth to you if you were buying that business today? Now that's the job for the investor to work out. They have to work out what's the value of that money machine today after discounting its future cash flows at whatever rate the investor thinks is appropriate. Now after arriving at the value of the money machine, if you can buy it for less than you think it's worth, or rather significantly less than you think it's worth, then why wouldn't you? It's the equivalent of paying 40 cents to buy a dollar. That's either something that's gonna excite you to the point where you can barely sleep because you think about all the money that you can make, or it won't. And if it doesn't, that's okay. I mean, people are wired differently and not everyone is gonna be excited by making money in the stock market. But if you're excited by the concept, then you need to go about it in the right way. Because if you don't, there's every chance you'll lose money compared to the index. So you might make money, but just not as much as people who invested in the index. Worst case, you'll actually lose money. You know, you'll turn a dollar into 40 cents, which brings me to dealing with risk. Now it's counterintuitive, but let this sink in because it's, it's an important concept. Now beating the market in this value-driven way is less risky than simply investing in an index. Because whilst it clearly takes a lot more effort to pick your stocks, if you're only buying stocks at below intrinsic value, far below, depending on your tolerance for risk, then buying a dollar for 40 cents is less risky than buying a dollar for 80 cents, even though both of those scenarios make you money. So to put it another way, the index will of course contain the bargains that you find, but it will also contain the dogs that are overvalued and will under deliver. And if you buy the index, you're gonna to have to make peace with the fact that you're also buying the fleas that come with those dogs. So what's the takeaway? How can you become a super investor? Well, it's clearly not the 1980s anymore. Companies are different, investors are different, available research is different. So the approach to investing has to be, you guessed it, different. But the fundamentals are the same, which is that investing in companies that are priced incorrectly based on your analysis, and it has to be your analysis, is how you can beat the market. If you're doing this, hedge against risk by injecting a margin of safety. So if you value a stock at $100 per share, don't buy it at 99 because that's not giving you enough of a risk cushion. Instead, something closer to $70 or $80 may be more appropriate. And then you simply wait for the market to wake up to the value that you've spotted and they have missed. Now that might be 
many months down the line, maybe even years down the line. And that is the tricky part. You see, your work's not done once you've picked the stocks. You've then got to buy them, clearly, and then you've got to hold them. And it's doing that that differentiates you from most people. Because most people sell when the going gets rough, and they also often sell too early when the going gets good because they don't think it's going to last. Investment psychology can be crazy, and it's how we react to the pressures, the stress, the influences of the market, especially at times like these where markets are you know, very volatile and often red. That's when the biggest impact to your portfolio can be seen. So set your conviction, keep it locked. Now, I've obviously glossed over a lot of key principles here, biggest amongst them being how do you even go about valuing a company? For most people, to be honest, I'd say don't bother, just invest in an index fund. However, I do plan on doing some videos, some valuation videos that reflect how I approach picking individual stocks. So please subscribe to the channel if that's something that you'd like to see. Slap the like button if you've enjoyed this video. And if investing in index funds is something that you want to know a little bit more about, then check out this little video here. It's only two minutes. It's an animation and it will maybe help. Until next time, peace.